right, so today for our um, Chef Showdown competition, the final round, the two finalist teams, they're going to be preparing an entree or appetizer, um, including Atlantic salmon in their project for today. Um, so we decided to purchase a whole Atlantic salmon from our uh, purveyor, who is Ace Endico. And this salmon comes, uh, it's farm raised and they remove all the inners. So we're ready to go. And I'll be honest with you, I think it's a little more difficult to fillet a salmon when the inners are removed because this kind of flaps down, but we're going to make it work. I'm used to filleting fish that are whole with the inners, AKA guts included. Um, salmon, I think is one of the easiest fish to actually fillet. <clears throat> it's a little more forgiving and you can remove the pin bones at the end, which is what I'm going to show everybody. So with this salmon, the first fillet is typically the easiest fillet to get off. Once you flip it over, and the other fillet is absent, it's just a little more difficult. Now, if we were doing like a fluke, a flounder, or a sole, that is even more difficult because this salmon only has two fillets on it. A fluke, a flounder, or a sole, which are bottom flat fish, they're wider, but they're flat, and they're only maybe from three quarters of an inch to an inch thick, and there's four fillets on a fluke, flounder, sole. So it's a little more difficult. So our first step, I lift up their front fin, fin and I just make an incision. And you want to kind of come right to the, to the head. There's a lot of meat right here. And to be honest with you, a lot of saltwater fish, a delicacy in saltwater fish is the cheek. So we fish for striped bass a lot. And uh, a fish called blackfish, a.k.a. tatog. We always cut the cheeks out of them and saute the cheeks. It looks like a little tiny scallop. They're absolutely delicious. Salmon has a small cheek on it. It's really not enough to even bother with. Um, TJ is going to be eating the eyeballs later. He's going to saute them in a little bit of garlic. I can't wait to see it. So as you're filleting the salmon, you want to run your fillet knife, and you really want a flexible knife. A fillet knife should be flexible, and the tip of it should be very sharp. Now, this fish, the scales are removed. If the scales were on it, it the scales will dull your knife very well. The scales act as armor for the fish, protects it from parasites and numerous other things that could hurt it, for lack of a better way of saying it. When you get down past about the dorsal fin, you can actually cut right through to the stomach, and then you push the knife right along the spine of the salmon. And you want to make sure you get right down to the tail, okay? Then I'll usually come up, and then I just start working my knife along the bones. a vegetable peeler, preferably a straight long one. Gracias. So there's one side and of course you know in a restaurant we're always going to clean it up and make it a little more even. I kind of had one little mistake here. Um, we could save that for salmon tata if anybody wants to try some raw fish. Now, whenever you do this, I cut through the bones right here. These are called pin bones. You can see these pin bones right here. If you ever see salmon in Big Y, it might even say on the sheet, Atlantic salmon fillets, pin bone removed. Anytime you purchase a whole side of salmon or a whole salmon like this, you always want to make sure you remove these pin bones. And I'll show you guys how to do that in a second. These are all the bones right here. Can somebody tell me, what can I do with the carcass? Once I remove the fillets, what can I do with the carcass of this fish, the remaining part? Make a stock. Make a stock. Yeah, well, I was going to well, say, like a, yeah, like a stock. And, and is there anything else I'm going to add to the stock other than the fish? What's the, what's the French term we use for adding aromatics and flavorings? So we could add a, a sachet de spice or a bouquet garni, which is aromatics wrapped in a cheesecloth or tied up in a bundle. I'm thinking of something else, another French term. 
Aromatics, we're adding flavor. We're going to strain it out with the stock at the end. Elena always knows. What is it? Nope. Court bouillon would be the, maybe a liquid we would poach salmon in. Begins with an M, ends in an X. What is it? Mirepoix. Thank you. What is mirepoix? Carrot, celery, onion. Tell me the ratio of carrot, celery, onion on a standard mirepoix. You don't know this? 50% onion, 25% carrot, 25% celery. And that there's variations to that. In Italy, they do it different. They add a little pancetta. They add a little bit of garlic. You go down to Louisiana, green bell pepper, maybe some jalapeno, some garlic. Different depends on the region of the world that you're, you're in. So we're going to flip this over. That's, this would all go into stock. Jake, I, I really don't want to cut you, but... I got to move a little bit. All right. So once again, we're going to come in, turn our knife so we get there, then spin the knife around. And he's, you know, when you fillet a fish, you got to kind of wiggle the tip of the knife because you're trying to avoid some of the bones. Like I said, you get down just about past. This is the dorsal fin of the fish. I'm going to go right through the belly. Then I'm going to ride that knife right down the spine of the fish. And this is actually a pleasure to do it right here because I'm usually doing this on a boat in the ocean when the boat's going like this and the knife's going up and down and I'm slipping on fish guts. This is delightful. This one I kind of made a mess out of too. Could somebody... Actually, use this. Now, you could certainly come back and scrape some of this off. We watched a video this morning where the chef took his knife and he scraped all this meat off. And you could make like a salmon tata. You could actually poach it and make a salmon mousse, pipe it out on top of cucumber rounds, crackers, anything like that. You always want to try to maximize every single part of the fish or any, any animal that you're working with. That animal had a life. We took it for the sake of eating, so you want to ma make sure you use every single part of it. Um, I would get as much meat off of this, I will later, and then we'll make a fish stock out of it. Um, anybody ever have salmon mousse? No. You've had chocolate mousse, you've had vanilla use, mousse, strawberry mousse. Salmon mousse is very, it's a very smooth, usually have a little bit of sherry wine in it, um, different aromatics, and you puree it till it's smooth, pipe it with a pastry bag, just like you would whipped cream with a star tip, or you could even make like canapé sandwiches out of it. So many different variations, but you want to make sure you use all of it. So my contestants, are we doing it skin on or skin off? Okay, so I'm leaving the skin. So like this white here is actually omega-3 fatty fatty acids, which are very, very beneficial. And then between the skin and the flesh of the salmon, there's kind of a whitish, sometimes brownish layer, and it's actually omega-3 fatty acids, and it actually keeps the fish its inner temperature regulated. Um, if you were in colder water, they'd have a thicker layer. Warmer water, a little thinner layer. These are all farm-raised. Um, Chef Nick turned me on to something this year called Faroe Island salmon, um, which is raised up in Iceland, Norwegian area. Uh, I think it's like literally on the Faroe Islands. Yep, the Faroe Islands. And they're more, they're still farm raised, but they're raised with like nets that are like miles apart, and they're able to swim and live their life in the ocean rather than a hole dug in an old cornfield, and they're fed um, liver pellets all day long. That's why a lot of your farm raised fish doesn't taste like the fish that our ancestors were catching and eating years ago because we farm raised them and feed them different things than they're used to from their natural environment. All right, so it's going to trim a little bit more of that off. Uh, contestants, I'm going to let you prep your own portions, but I recommend you get a scale, a portion scale, cover it with plastic wrap, portion, make sure all your portions are within a half, a half an ounce or so, so they look the same on the plate, okay? Jeez, Jake, man. Okay. It's all good. Hey, for, for today, can you guys stick with more of the loin 
and avoid the tail just for presentation. I'll use the tail in the restaurant another day, okay? But you guys should be able to get your four portions out of one filet. I'm hoping to use another filet in the restaurant another time so I can recoup some revenue from it. What's revenue? Is revenue money coming in or money going out? What's money going out referred to as? My operating cost, cost or expense. Yep, good job. Why is it important in a restaurant to really focus on both expense and revenue? To make sure that you are actually making money. To make sure our restaurant's profitable. Um, we have Chef Monica from uh, Shortstop here in Westfield, one of the probably busiest locations in the city of Westfield. They crank product out all day long and all night long. I'm sure you're very involved with your um, finances, profit. Think of it this way, anything that goes in the trash barrel, that's money that could be in your pocket. Or money in the savings account when you need a new piece of equipment, boom, you can get it. Or your fry later breaks, something goes down, you have that resource to go use. You don't have to dive into your own pocket. You should always have money um, set aside from your, from your profits to reinvest into your business. And that goes, I don't care if you're a plumber, electrician, restaurant owner, contractor, um, aviation technician, you need a new tool, you might want to make sure you're making money so you can purchase that product. All right, so pin bones. These actually are coming out nice. I think I'm going to have them, I'm going to have them use this one. So like I said, you want to run your finger right here, and I can feel those pin bones. I wish I had a pair of tweezers, but I don't. I'm hoping this works. Contestants, I do want you guys, though, to double check the pin bones, okay? I may just happen to leave a couple in there to test you. Because that's just what I do. Tweezers work great, but I think the only pair of tweezers we have in the building are down in the nurse's office. And I'm pretty confident she's probably pulled many a splinters out of carpentry students and horticulture students' fingers. So I really didn't want to use those tweezers. Unless you guys want me to. 